Okay. You come across this video, you hit the channel called Free Basket Living, where we try not to put all our eggs in one basket. But uh, thank you for stopping by. And if you hear anything or see anything that you think might be beneficial to somebody else, if you do me a favor and just kindly share that information with other folks by whatever means you feel necessary. So, I'm kind of in a hurry because I got a lawn, I got a mow, well, what we call a yard, and some weed eating to do. Um, but before I did, I told my wife I wanted to share this information concerning the water, gravity water uh, filter systems that we get on the market nowadays. I chose Berkey four or five, we're coming out five years now. So what I want to share with some folks here, I'm going to primarily address two things. There's a lot of things I could share, but primarily two things. I'm going to touch on the water flow rate, you know, the issue that people still kind of wonder about and question. It's real simple, nothing to worry about. But the other thing I want to address that a lot of people have, um, but I haven't seen addressed much anywhere. I'm going to address this. So if you have one system like this, like the Berkey or Alexa Pure or something like that, especially if they're using uh, some sort of ceramic filters or in this case, and I think Alexa Pure is probably about the same, uh, carbon composite filters, I'm going to discuss what a lot of people have questions about is that slimy feel that you get on your filters when we go to clean them or to perform our maintenance on them. What this is going to do, what I'm hoping to do here, address, um, is that number one, the frequency at which we clean our filters is going to be dictated by the original water source that we're filtering to begin with. That's because, you know, not all water sources are going to have the same amount of junk in them or contaminants. When it comes to the water flow, if your water flow is dropping, the, the rate of flow that you're getting, you know, to the point that it's not satisfying you uh, to uh, provide enough uh, filtered water to accommodate your needs or wants, then it's getting time to do maintenance and clean those filters. So that's a good thing here because we have filters that we can clean. They're not throwaway one-time use filters like a, a, a air filter or paper filter that you have in your automobile unless you went on to something like the K&N air filters that we have nowadays that we can do the same kind of thing clean them perform maintenance on them we get more longevity so it's a good thing to have a cleanable filter because we're going to get longer life so we perform that maintenance, okay, and when we do the, when we put the filters back in, it increases our flow rate again. Along with doing that maintenance for a lot of us, we have this uh, film, this slick, slimy film that's on our filters. And when I was curious about it, I started thinking, and light bulbs started clicking on me because I'm from the Ozarks. I grew up out here in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And I'm accustomed to going to lakes, the rivers, the creeks. We have plenty of springs. We've always grown up on well water, for me, primarily. Um, but anyway, when you go to the creeks and the lakes and the rivers, and you get on them rocks, and they're slick and slimy and snotty, what we have is the same thing is going on in our filters, on our filters, is that biofilm, okay, algae. You know, stuff like that. That's why we get that on our filters. And as that collects on our filters as well and can grow, that's obviously going to um, start clogging up the filters themselves along with other contaminants that we're trying to hold out. The more it filters out, you know, the slower the flow rate it's going to have. So it's a normal process. It is, it's not something to get concerned about. But in thinking about that, I wanted to do an experiment. 
So I kind of come this across this, not by, I can't say accident. I did an experiment. And if you know anything about me yet, even though I'm brand new on this YouTube thing, okay, you probably already know that I'm pretty excited about knowing and learning and growing into natural farming techniques. And through that process, I come to get more and more excited about microbes. In particular, the beneficial microbe of lactobacillus. You've seen this bottle in other videos. You know in my composting toilet system that we utilize it. Um, you see me do, I hope, the video on how I go about cultivating the bacteria. So my experiment was, when we go to fill our upper chamber in our Berkey water filter, we give a few squirts and close the lid. Now we don't do it every single time. Probably about every two to three times that we go to fill our upper chamber here to filter water, we give the lactobacillus introduce the beneficial microbes. Ever since then, this is two things that it's done. Number one is we haven't had the problem with that biofilm building up on our carbon uh, composite filters. Haven't had that issue ever since. That was huge because what that also did, that decreased the frequency of maintenance or cleaning my filters, which is very easy to do to begin with. We would typically clean our filters probably about every five or six weeks is when we'd have to take our filters out, go through the cleaning process, and reinstall them because of the flow rate. And th that, you know, wasn't overbearing, but ever since I started introducing the microbes, that has now reduced to about once, maybe twice a year since we've been introducing the lactobacillus bacteria into our upper chamber with our water, well water that we're filtering. Now we still have to do maintenance on our filters because we're on well water and we have wonderful, great tasting well water. We are on one of the largest aquifers around here in the Ozarks. Um, but with our well water, and partly the reason why it tastes so well, because it has a high mineral content. And in particular, it has a high levels of lime. If you know anything about lime, <laughs> it has its drawbacks to it, okay, when it comes to appliances and washers and pots and pans and, and drainage pipes and stuff like that. It, ha it builds up and uh, it can be quite difficult to deal with. So we still have to maintain our filters, you know, but it's only about every year. I'm going to say twice a year, just to be safe. Somewhere between once and twice a year, because right now, me and my wife can't think of the last time we've actually had to do maintenance on our filters or clean them. And the reason we do is because of the line. It's not clogging up or slowing down near as fast once we eliminated, found our solution to the biofilm or algae buildup on our filters. This was a huge game changer for us. When it comes to the flow rate, it all ties in together, but the bottom line is if you're on well water, you're filtering rainwater, spring water, lake, pond, river, whatever, the amount of contamination that you're filtering out is going to dictate the frequency of your maintenance. And that's also going to have direct correlation to your flow rate or how quick that flow rate drops in volume from the upper chamber to the lower chamber in your gravity fed systems. Hold on Penny, give me just a minute. So this was something that I wanted to share with you folks, okay? If you're considering getting something like the Berkey, all right, or those other brands. I'm trying to think of those. Pro Pure and Alexa Pure, they're all good filters. Don't get wrapped up around the marketing numbers. 6,000 gallons per set of filters or 10,000 gallons per set of filters. You start looking into that kind of stuff. Bottom line is, I believe they could probably last 20, 30,000 gallons. They probably are both equal. I don't know this. And they probably can filter 50,000 gallons of water. I don't know this, but I kind of got a suspicion that they can. But anyway, you're going to have less maintenance on your filters. 
I believe if you're having that issue with the algae or biofilm, that slick, slimy feel on your filters, if you in incorporate some bacteria, beneficial bacteria, and we spray this in our water anyway. I spray it in my drinking water if I get some out of the tap. And this has proven to be, once again, a huge game changer somewhere else in our life. And in this case, I'm sharing it with you concerning your gravity-fed, higher-end uh, water filtration systems, such as the Berkey, which, by the way, I'm a 100% satisfied customer with. Berkey helped me confirm my theory, you know, years ago that I had about that slickness because it just triggered to me, where does this feel like? And it's down at the creek that we go to, or the lakes. It's that film that's on the rocks that you get and can be quite slick. You can pick up a rock out of a creek or a river and you can sit there and feel it and it'll be slimy and you can rub that stuff off. That's probably what you got going on here. If you have city water, you're on municipal water, you may not be having that issue because you're so inundated with fluoride and chlorine and all these other chemicals, you guys may not be having that issue with that slimy feel on your, on your water because there probably ain't anything biological that can survive and all that stuff. So, something to think about. I hope you got something out of it. Share with somebody else. May all your branches become full of fruit, and I'll see you next time. Whoop!